this is your instrument panel. Um, if you play in realistic mode, you're going to need to know what these things do from time to time, because the top left heads-up display, that's like the video game part of the game, it doesn't give you all the information you need at all. So, <clears throat> if you know how to use these gauges properly, um, you'll be able to navigate in the dark, in the clouds, you'll be able to maneuver, um, you'll keep your plane from stalling and falling out of the ground like a brick, because for like the first 10 hours of gameplay I didn't know how to, like, I didn't know what was causing my death spirals. Now I realize what was causing my death spirals, and if I had known what these gauges were doing, they would have warned me. So, let's start off from the... We're gonna just work our way across this gauge. So this thing right here, flaps, um, if you flick them down, like for landing, you see it move, and if you raise them, it's in that up position. Um, those are your flaps, you can see them on the wing, barely moving. Um, typically, you don't really need them unless you're landing, and even then, you can land without using them. Um, but they're helpful, they slow you down, so that's what that does. Uh, these two gauges to the left of the flap gauge, so the, the two to the left of that, it says empty fuel and emergency. Those don't do anything, ignore them. The gauge that says up down and the one to the left of it, uh, the up down is your landing gear. So right now it's down. When I take off and flick it up, that light will glow up instead of down. So my landing gear is down. Uh, the gauge to the left of it is a clock. So it is like nine minutes to 11 o'clock according to that clock in the game. The gauge below the clock that says LB into oxygen, that doesn't do anything, ignore it. Or if it does do something, I don't know, it's not relevant, don't worry about it. Nose up and nose down, you don't really need that gauge, but it's there. So, I don't know, I never really use nose up or nose down. I find that looking at my climb, my climb kind of tells me what's going on. Um, that gauge I do look at, and, it, and obviously if I'm climbing my nose is up, and well, I don't know. I'll discuss that once I take off. That's going to be hard to explain. This is air miles per hour. It's got like two rings of numbers, and it's in multiples of 10. So if that little white arrow... Here, let's hit some throttle, and you're going to see it start moving. Okay. So when it gets to the 10, that means I'm going 100 miles an hour, and my plane will take off from the ground. And let's actually just take off. Alright, so we are going to take off, and now, yeah, going 120 miles an hour, I can pull up, and yes, okay, that works. And you can see the speed gauge climbing, so the 14 means 140 miles an hour, 150, I'm now going 160, let's retract the landing gear, because <laughs> it's yelling at me, cool, landing gear is up, and we are flying. So see how this is climbing? So now I'm going 200 miles an hour. I'll be soon going 240, 280. When it gets back and does a full rotation back on the 6, you'll notice that little 32 next to the 6. When this does a second go around, it basically means it's the smaller numbers on the inside. So you'll be going 320 miles an hour and 360 miles an hour. Uh, this middle gauge is your wings and horizon line. It's that middle gauge. So the long line that's on the bottom represents the horizon, and then the little line represents my airplane. So if I bank right, you'll see that turn right. So it's always in relation to your airplane, but it basically tells you what the ground is doing. And then that little dot uh, tells you, like, you know, the bottom level. Because if you're upside down, um, just know that that little guy tells you, you know, where the ground is. I'll, I'll go upside down and I'll show you what I mean. So let's just go upside down. Okay, up, up, up. It's kind of a mess. Hang on, wait. Oh, wait, wait. Up, up, up. I might make this. I might make this. I might make this. <laughs> no, I didn't make it. <laughs> All right, let's start over. That's cool. I'm in, uh, yeah, perfect. Perfect! Brand new plane. Awesome. So, that's what that gauge does. Climb is your climb rate. This will matter if you're like a high altitude guy. <laughs> or like going up as high as the plane will let you go. If you want to go as high as possible, you're going to stare at these three gauges uh, for a while. RPM is how much throttle your engine has. So it basically means how much gas you have. So at max throttle uh, for this airplane, it goes up to 30. So I just kind of know that if it's at 30, I'm pushing the engine pretty hard. <coughs> okay, this oil gauge. Um, when you get shot, the gold oil gauge will go down to zero because you're leaking oil. The gauge next to it is oil temperature. For the most part, 90 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius is going to be not ideal, and your plane's going to start losing power and overheating. 
The rad temperature right there stands for radiator temperature. So that's your that's your water. And typically your water does not like being past 100 degrees Celsius or you know about 225 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so the left turn, right turn, that technically works, uh, but I don't really use it. I don't really use it. I mean, really, to me, the main gauges I end up using are the airspeed. That's like the, probably the most important gauge. The second most important gauge is potentially the horizon line, uh, which is the middle one. The climb is helpful when you're climbing and want to climb efficiently and fast. It's it's helpful. Um, RPM is helpful, and then these two temperature gauges over down here are helpful. And then at the very bottom, that is gallons of fuel. And that is a real gauge that works. It will tell you when you run out of gas. So, yeah. It'll tell you when it runs out of gas. You want to look at the bottom numbers, because the bottom numbers are the flying numbers. So if you're at 100% throttle, that gauge is, is entirely accurate. So it, if it says uh, 5, 10, 20, 40, 60, it doesn't mean gallons. It means minutes in the air at full throttle. Uh, if you use more emergency powers, it will drain a little faster. But basically, if you go 100% throttle, you're going to be able to fly for about 60 minutes uh, depending on the airplane you're using, give or take. Sometimes more, sometimes less. <clears throat> let's, um... Let's take off. Let's take off. Okay, so full throttle. What's really interesting is that actually you can literally do this entirely without looking at your... at your plane. So, like, once that gets past the 10 on the left, I know I'm going 100 miles an hour. Now I know I can fly, so I'm pulling up a little bit. I'm going to raise my landing gear. And so see the climb? If you want to climb relatively efficiently, you want the climb to be at a 4, and then you want your airspeed to continue to go up. So right now, my airspeed is barely going up, and if I want to force my air, I want to force the climb to be 4, okay? And so you can see that's starting to go down, which means that this is not a sustainable climb. And see so how the climbing meter is going back down. I'm starting to level off automatically with the horizon line. Um, so then let's go to what four climb looks like. So let's go a little higher. And so now that that's climbing at a four rate, if you look behind you, it's a steeper angle. And my airspeed's 160, which is pretty good, so I could sit here for a while. Um, depending on what your worries are, you might care more about your airspeed versus more about your climb rate. Um, so if you want to climb successfully, uh, you want to make sure that your airspeed can maintain whatever you're doing. So if my airspeed starts going down, I pull down a little bit, and then my airspeed remains like neutral and or goes higher. Uh, if I level off the plane just by using the gauge, you'll notice that my airspeed now starts climbing because I'm not actually the airplane's not going up anymore, so it doesn't need to you know fight gravity, and I'm gaining airspeed. And then it, I'm still climbing because the climb meter, but not at as fast a rate. Alright, so now that's maxed out, and you can see my airspeed's now going down. And I'm already a mile up. So, without actually looking um, outside the window for bearings or using uh, third person, I'm literally a mile up in the air. Which is, you know, a couple thousand meters. Um, the reason why the gauges are important is that it's very easy to get disoriented in this game. As you can tell, like, as you can tell, like, where's the ground? I can't even actually see the ground anymore, because it's raining. Um, and this game does have weather effects. Let's level that off, get a little turbulence. So yeah, like, when, when you're flying through this type of stuff, <laughs> you've got to, like, stare at your gauges. Because the heads-up display in the top left corner of the screen will not tell you all the stuff you need to know. So I'm easing off the throttle because my oil and water are overheating, and as I ease off the throttle, you can see both the oil and water going down, and it goes down pretty quick in real time. I also see from the climb that I'm falling out of the sky. So let's push down. Okay, cool. Alright. And now my airspeed's back up to normal, so I should be able to fly again. Let's give it some throttle. Okay. And we will proceed to climb. So the problem with this airplane is that the oil in the water keeps overheating, so it's going to be really hard to find that balance. Um, so actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to ease off it so it can cool down, but I don't want to like fall out of the sky like last time. Last time I cut my throttle off 100%, this time I'm not going to. So I jack my throttle down to 80%, and these are climbing down. They might not be climbing down very fast, but they're definitely climbing down. They're not getting hotter. 
and I'm going 180 miles an hour. So I'm going pretty fast, uh, and it's not too bad. I'm going to ease off this just a little more, because I can afford to ease off of it. So now my engine sound is 64%, and the oil temperature dropped out to no longer being a problem. I'm going to watch this gauge, and I'm just trying to let my engines cool down. When this gets to about 180 miles an hour, I'll then hit the throttle again and start pulling up again. We can see that I'm barely climbing. Barely climbing. If that arrow is above the zero, you're climbing. If it's below the zero, you're falling. Okay. Now, let's pull up a little bit. Oh, return to the battlefield. Okay, let's, uh, let's turn around. All right, let's turn around. Where am I? All right, hang on. That way. Okay. <laughs> All right, so literally using the gauges, because, like, dude, I, there's no way to do this without the gauges. All right. Cool. So let's flip around this way, because the game is hating what I'm doing right now. Okay, is that is that good? That's good. All right, cool. Um... What am I doing? It feels like the hand pull up because I don't know. There we go. All right, cool. I was like, I was literally confused as to where I was. So I'm like, let's just pull up to make sure I'm going up again. All right, so we lost a couple thousand meters, but we're getting them back very quickly. Okay, so now I'm basically back to where I let off before. So now I'm going to level the plane off and then see if I can build up some airspeed. And so, if your airspeed is like 200 miles an hour or greater, you can basically pull up in a straight line and maintain it for a while. Um, so let's try to do that right now. We're going to do a massive climb right now, but it's going to basically make our airspeed go down to nothing. Okay. Okay, and now I'm going to level it off. Because I don't want to fall out of the sky like a brick. So now at about 120 miles an hour, I leveled it off. And we climbed a good thousand feet in that one go, which is basically over 300 meters. We basically climbed 300 meters in a few seconds, um, which is pretty decent. And this is not a good airplane. Um, one thing that's interesting about high altitude flying, and to me in this game, anything beyond mm, like 7,000 meters or you know a few miles up is definitely high altitude. Um, the higher you go, the cooler it is around you. So your engine will stop overheating when you get really high. At that point, you can go max engine, and you don't have to worry about overheating because literally the cold air around you is so cold that your engines can't warm up, and your oil can't warm up, and your water can't warm up, and it's pretty ideal. So this is a medium strength climb. It's not a straight up line, but it's definitely a significant steep climb. And so I'm just gonna maintain it for as long as possible. And you can see on the top left corner, my altitude is just uh, in the heads-up display, it's definitely just like flying. And let's level it off and keep it at a nice speed. All right, cool. <coughs> cool. Dude, my allergies are killing me. So notice that we're still in the clouds and we can't see anything. I'm gonna ease off the throttle to 80%. Try to maintain my airspeed, and I want my engines to cool down. The higher you go, the slower your plane will move because there's less air for your propeller to like force through. All right, let's just go. I'm going to cut the throttle all the way right now, just for a second. So I have no throttle. Well, I got three percent throttle. I'm losing airspeed rapidly, but I'm waiting for that oil gauge to go down. I want the oil to go down, and I'm going to now hit the throttle because I don't want to fall out of the sky. 120 miles is kind of where I want to be. It's a nice sweet spot for level flying. You can technically fly at like 110 to 100 miles an hour, depending on the airplane. But one having it be on the 12 is pretty good. So before I learned what this airspeed gauge and how it worked meant, what was happening was I was taking sharp turns at high altitudes, and then I was like literally losing airspeed, and I would just fall out of the sky like a brick. And a lot of times I could not regain control of the airplane. Um, and I didn't know why that was happening. So if you make sharp turns in this game and your plane starts making this weird herky-jerky movement, it's because your airspeed isn't high enough. If you have high airspeed, you can take any turn and your plane will not fall out of the sky. You won't get like this weird rocking sensation. Like it looked like I was riding a horse in my airplane when I would make a sharp turn without enough uh, airspeed. Um, so it's one of those things where I'm like, knowing your airspeed is super important. Because going too slow, you will fall out of the sky and going too fast, your wings will snap off. So, as a good rule of thumb for like the Spitfires and planes that are similar to it, see this gauge, how it's at 200, 
and it's going to go to 24. When it does a full rotation, it, that then means that the number next to the 6 means 320 miles an hour, 360 miles an hour, 40 miles an hour, or 400 miles an hour, 440 miles an hour, 480 miles an hour. Your airplane wings tend to kind of snap off if you do incredibly intense maneuvers past 400 miles an hour. Anything past 400 miles an hour, I don't recommend like doing the sharpest like pulls or turns possible because your wings could very well fall off. And if you do it f at 480 miles an hour, your wings will 100% fall off. Um, I can go down in a straight line, and when I hit about 600 miles per hour, my wings will just like snap off my airplane, even if I'm not doing any type of turn. So it's one of those things where, believe it or not, this airspeed is important. Uh, it's definitely important. You can make your heads-up display match it if you go in and check the IAS box and controls, which is right... where is it? Actually, no, it's in options, I'm sorry. So if we go to options... where is it? Okay, indicate landing speed. Normally it is flicked off, right? And I will show you what that looks like. So my airspeed says 316 miles per hour in the top left corner. But if you look over here, I'm actually not doing that. I'm literally doing about 260 miles an hour. So right now there's a discrepancy with the speed on the top left heads-up display versus my actual airspeed in the airplane. So this is why it matters, because you might get like not correct information on the top left corner heads-up display, whereas this will always be correct. So if you pay only attention to the speed gauge in the top left corner, you are going to fall out of the sky with no real explanation, and you won't understand why, and it's because literally your airplane's going like 100 miles an hour. Doesn't matter what it says in the top left corner of speed, that, that, that's your relation to the ground in the airplane. Uh, it's not your relation to actually being in the air. So I don't know why they default it that way, but to fix it, to fix it, we will then go back into, uh, not controls, it's going to be actually be options, hang on. Okay, so back into options, and we're going to look for IAS speeds right here, indicate airspeed, we're going to check it, and then we're going to hit OK. Now, all of a sudden, your top left gauge says 174 miles an hour, and oh my god, it's actually accurate. So, if you want the top left gauge, or the top left heads-up display to make sense, click on IAS, and then it will link it to this gauge. And this is actually the gauge you care about. So if you get confused, because you're like, I don't know if it's on the 20 or if it's on the 400, because believe it or not, that can happen. You just look at the top left corner of your heads-up display, and it'll tell you, okay, 210 miles an hour, uh, or meters or whatever. So I'm going to keep climbing. And th the goal is to get above these clouds, which who knows. I'm already three miles off the ground, um, which is, I don't know, probably around 5,000 meters, somewhere in that neighborhood. So we're going to keep climbing, and when it gets to about the 12, I'm going to ease off of it. Actually, I'm going to ease off of it right now, because I don't want my engines to overheat. So, see how the top left has uh, oil and water in the heads-up display? If that ever turns red, even if you back off and you cool it back down again, you have suffered permanent damage for the end of the match. So, you'll never quite reach the top speed, your engine quote won't quite perform as well. Um, it, it is important to not let it ever turn red, so when it gets like dark, orange at that point I feel like let off of it and you know you won't suffer actual consequences take it seriously because even if it's red for a few seconds it's permanent damage to your engine just trust me and like you won't be able to go as fast uh, when you hit like max thrust at that point because you've, you've damaged it so I'm assuming that at some point I will get out of these clouds Yeah, can you imagine? Like, look at it. Like, oh, oh, we're getting there. <laughs> we're getting there. We're almost there. I bet if I do one intense climb, I will be out of these clouds. So, I, in order to do an intense climb, I want to hit about 200 miles an hour. I'm going to wait for that to hit the 20, and I'm going to pull up. Close enough. And I'm going to now level it off, nice and gentle, or my carburetor will stall. Up, oh, it stalled anyway. I thought that was pretty gentle, but it still stalled. All right, cool. So we're about four miles up. So on a rainy day in War Thunder, whether it's thunder and lightning or whatever it is, I gotta turn around. This thing's about to start screaming at me. So let's turn around. Notice how I'm feathering the stick. Oh, my airspeed's really low, so I'm going to ease off of it, otherwise I'm going to fall out of the sky. Which, once again, you would never know, because you have nothing to gauge how fast you're going. So that's why I'm like, dude, this gauge is what kept me from stalling just then. I was literally going 100 miles an hour. I was right about to fall out of the sky. 
Which, when, once you start falling out of the sky, if you fall out of the sky backwards, holy crap, you're never going to regain control. If you fall out of the sky nose first, you have a good chance of regaining control. But, definitely difficult. You don't want to stall and then start falling tail first into the ground. That's very difficult to survive. It's survivable, but very difficult. Okay. <clears throat> so, we are now four miles up. We are above the clouds. And this plane could literally go up another 10,000 feet. Which I'm not going to do, but there is no way it would be possible for me to get above the clouds without these three gauges right here. Like, there's no way. There's no way. Like, there really isn't. Like, this becomes a fine ballet with these three gauges, uh, and especially the higher you go. Because the higher you go, the slower you go, but you'll still fall out of the sky at 100 miles an hour when that uh, gauge reaches the 10. So, the higher you go, the less airspeed you can build, so then this starts becoming way less flexible because you don't have as much wiggle room anymore, because now it's going to be very hard for me to reach a speed of, say, 200 miles an hour. Although maybe not at this altitude, we're going to find out and do some tests. Because right now I'm basically barely climbing, I'm flying pretty much straight ahead. And yeah, it's, just, it's climbing so slowly, but my engine's fine. Notice that now I'm going full throttle, but my oil temperature is not getting... it's not increasing. It's not getting hotter, basically. So I've now hit that sweet spot of around four miles where I can go full throttle on the engine and it is not really going to overheat because the surrounding air is just too cold. This is what this is like pretty much a relatively sustainable climb looks like. And then if I pull straight up, that is not a sustainable climb. But if you got the airspeed, it's pretty good because like say you're going 200 miles an hour and you pull straight up and if a guy's chasing you, he is not going to be able to maintain that unless he's literally going faster than you. So you can basically escape people not by doing crazy turns or dive bombing. You can escape people by knowing how to climb properly or climbing you know, as quickly as possible. If you were to go this high, it would be rare for someone else to chase you down. Like, I'm literally now five miles up, and five miles to six miles up, Dude, no one's gonna get here. Like, it's gonna take them like 10 to 15 minutes of only caring about climbing to even do this. But hopefully, this uh, this kind of explains how the cockpit gauges work and then why it's important to understand them. So, as an example, I'm gonna create I'm gonna create a stall on purpose. And how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna pull up and. Actually, let's let's do this. Let's put the the default thing back on because this will prove how stupid this is and how important the gauges are. So once again, the game when you get it will have this checked off, right? So let's hit OK. Now the heads-up display is saying I'm going 200 miles per hour based on the airplane compared to the ground, but my actual airspeed is not even 140 miles an hour. So this is why I can't use the default top left heads-up display because if I do, I'm going to stall, but then the airspeed is still going to look good. So watch, this needle is going to hit the 10 and I'm going to hit, the, I'm going to stall. So my plane's almost going 100 miles an hour, but compared to the ground, I'm going like, you know, 180 miles an hour. So it's not actually an accurate reading, um, which is incredibly important to know. So like, when I'm making a sharp turn, I need this freaking thing to be above the 10. And you'll notice that if I start turning, it's going to go down. And then once it goes past like the 10, it's going to stall. Yeah, and now I've got a real problem. I've got a real problem now. Like, look at it, I'm in a death spiral. I'm in a, literally a death spiral. And the reason why I'm in a death spiral is that I let this gauge, oh jeez, go below the 10. And look at it, I'm going 133 miles an hour on the top left corner. That should be fine, but it's obviously not fine because that gauge is not accurate. Don't use it. You want to use the gauge in your cockpit. and Or if you don't want to use the gauge in your cockpit, you have to go down here and turn on indicate airspeed. And then that cockpit gauge and the top left speed actually are the same thing, and it's actually accurate at that point. You don't need to know what your ground speed is, and that's what it's default set to without telling you. You need to know what your airspeed is. So I'm going to cut the throttle, and maybe I will actually survive this. So basically, I'm going to turn like fighting. If it's turning to the right, I'm going to turn to the left. I'm also going to push the nose down. And this, I'm going to hit the yaw. I'm yawing all the way to the left. Like I'm seriously trying to regain control. Oh my god. Let's do it. I've almost got it. Okay, so now I'm going to reset the yaw. Okay. I'm, I'm basically pumping the yaw. You can see my legs moving. So I'm like, come on. Come on. Come on. 
Okay, this is this is good. I'm gonna now give some throttle, and I think I can get out of this now. I think I can get out. Of oh God, no, maybe not. Come on, come on. No, okay, this is a mess. This is a mess. So my engine is not okay. I, I gotta do this without the engine. This is not gonna work without the engine. Okay, so I'm pushing down and holding yaw left all the way. I'm gonna now turn left. Come on. Oh my god, dude. Oh my god. I think I'm gonna fall out of the sky. Anyway, um, if you don't want this to happen to you, right, like just falling out of the sky and never regaining control, you gotta pay attention to this airspeed gauge, and you better be going over 100 miles an hour. Okay. 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 D did we get it back? Holy crap! Wait, wait, not yet. What is wrong with the airplane? Wait, oh my, what is happening? Okay. I think we got it. Let's go down so we can get some visibility because I can't see anything. But yeah, we re we regained control, but I literally fell three miles. <laughs> so I fell like 66% of that entire climb to regain control. So if you lose control like a mile up or 2,000 meters up, there's a very good chance you will not have the time to regain control. Um, there's a very good chance of that. Now let's do something else. Let's go crazy fast. So I'm going 280 miles an hour. Now I'm going to be going 320 miles an hour because it's the second trip around this thing. 360 miles an hour. I'm going pretty fast. I'm now below the clouds. It's still raining. I'm going to pull down even more. I'm going to pull down even more. I'm going to now start pulling up. Man, dude, I cannot see anything. It's crazy. <laughs> okay, so oh wait, I passed out. My pilot passed out. This is a this is a rookie. Oh, <laughs> it's a rookie pilot. He can't handle the G forces, but hopefully that was helpful. Um, hopefully that was helpful discussing what all these gauges do and which ones matter and which ones don't. Fundamentally, the ones that matter are these three right here. Always have your airspeed above the ten when you're doing anything. If you're going like level. If you're turning, you need that above the 10, because once it goes below the 10, you're going to fall out of the sky. And for other airplanes, it might even be a lower number or a higher number, like the 12. But this airplane is light and easy to fly, so it can fly at about 100 miles per hour. But some planes can't, and this is what matters. If you want to, actually, let's do one more thing. I'll do a not enough airspeed sharp turn, and I will show you what that looks like. And it's one of those things where if you see this in your game, you're literally, like, uh, you'll never see this again if you understand how this works. So if you don't want to fall out of the sky and lose control of your airplane, which happened to me for the first 10 hours, you got to pay attention to this uh, gauge, because you have to. And if you don't want to, like, have weird herky-jerky turns, you got to pay attention to this gauge. So what we're going to do is we're going to build up some airspeed, and we're going to do a really hard turn. So I'm going to wait for about probably 200 miles per hour, and I'm going to do, like, a sharp, like, say I want to turn around type of turn. So go like this. Okay, now pull up. Okay, up, wait, wait, wait. Oh, there you go. Let's get a little higher. <laughs> Let's get a little higher. Okay. Okay, so. And let's turn. What? What? Okay. Oh my god, dude, this wind. The wind and the storm. I should have made this a clear day. <laughs> I should have made this a clear day. Alright, third time's a charm. <laughs> Let's do this. Okay, throttle up. Let's admire my nice little lady over there. Okay. So, let's, instead of doing that, let's, um... Hang on. Okay, so I'm off the ground. Also, top left uh, heads-up display that says altitude, that's compared to the ocean, not the ground, so pay attention to that. That altitude gauge is not going to tell you when you're going to hit the ground, actually. It's only telling you how much above sea level you are, so yeah. Okay, let's do this again. Alright, 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 oh, the landing gear! Oh, my landing gear fell off! Alright, alright, alright. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't need to land. You could actually, uh, you know what? Let's, uh, we should try to land without a landing gear. 
Oh, my gear's damaged. Okay, so I can't even raise the landing gear anymore. So my landing gear mechanism is screwed, and I have one wheel. Oh, did the other one fall off? Thank God. I actually need the other one to fall off if I want to actually land. All right, so let's get... Um, let's ruin my airspeed real quick. So I'm going to pull up to ruin my airspeed. I want it to be about right about there. Fine, perfect. Perfect. Okay, so now I'm pulling down. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is, with not a lot of airspeed, I'm going to try to do a turn. Or really, I'll, I'll just keep turning while maintaining... Uh, I, I basically, I'm trying to get the plane to stall. So, which is harder to do at lower altitudes, believe it or not, because the air is so thick. Alright, hang on. Let's, let's, uh, okay. Let's go back up. Dude, like, if it's so hard to describe what this feels like um, when you're flying in simulation mode, but it's it's definitely amazing. Okay. Okay, critical speed. Okay, so, cool. It's below the 10, and notice that it says critical speed push down. Up, and up. I lost control. Yeah, there we go. Um, let's actually go into a game, because I feel like I've covered how the gauges work well enough. Actually, let me shut down the stream, and I'll start a new one. That way it's not, it has nothing to do with this control thing, actually. So give me a sec. Um, broadcast.